too. <laughs> All right. Well, it is. Oh my phone is like. It's one o'clock. So you ready? Sure. Ready? Get started. Yeah. We have absolutely no idea how many people are watching, but we do know. If I didn't tell you that it will be recorded and available oh, cool. to all the um, all the members. Awesome. So they can watch it awesome. at any time. Yeah. So I want to welcome you to the second A2IM education webinar. Today we're going to be talking about music marketing. And we'll be discussing, like everything we'll be discussing, you can apply to your label or to the bands on your roster or to a release, um, an album release or a release. I'm here. I have. I'm a founder of Northerly Agency, and I'm an A2IM Education Committee member. And in Northerly, we promote a lot of we promote independent bands, and I also love to teach them how to do it themselves. And that's why I wanted Marnie to join me today. Hello. So Marnie mm -hmm. Wander is founder of Sneak Attack Media. It's a digital marketing company. And you offer services where you know they can hire your company to do their market, help them, yeah, to do their marketing. Mm -hmm. But you also have um, something really cool where they you teach them how how they can do it themselves, right? And that is something that I really want to focus on today because you know it's great if you can hire somebody, but if you don't have the budget for that, what is it that you should know? What can you do yourself, right? I love that DIY today. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we're going to do, so let me tell you, just Marnie, what I'm going to kind of guide us through today. So we'll be talking about, over the next 20 minutes, we're going to be talking about just like defining, first of all, like defining your brand, mm -hmm. knowing your market, where you belong, um, and your target, and using your network, very important for us who are independent, just using our, who we already have, using our network using social media, publicity, then we'll talk about the numbers, so streaming and followers, all those numbers. And we'll talk about building an email list, and we'll talk about then kind of pulling it all together and making a marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. Then we do have 10 minutes for some questions, so you can chat your questions to us, and then hopefully we can get to that, and that is the next half hour, okay? So since we have much time, let's get started. Um, first of all, if you're a band and you, I want you to define your band, mm -hmm. define, what can you tell me about that? Totally, I mean, that can mean a million different things for a million different people, but usually a good place to start is, is the look and feel of who you are. Um, so simple things like your color scheme and your fonts and things like that and really like honing in on just a couple colors and maybe one or two fonts that like really represent who you are mm -hmm. and all of that kind of comes from your values as a band who you know who you are and really looking also at like who you're not you know mm -hmm. so you, at, when we start with a band we ask them what, what their colors are but then we ask them what would you what colors would you do you never want to okay you know things okay like that. I that. yeah and then maybe, yeah, so maybe defining those key things about your brand and then letting it reflect throughout all your platforms, right. all your, your business, like your cards, your posters, you know, your digital platforms and just Everything. so that you can become recognizable, right? Yeah. And that can all change. I don't think anything has been stone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, but you know you just look at somebody you know you think of it you think of a band and you think of their album and you think like what visually comes to mind emotionally what comes to mind and that's everything you create your content your branding your artwork your your stuff or socials it should just have that look that similar look and feel mm -hmm. you know just to kind of live in the world of what that thing is right all right so maybe pick up three colors and pick you know, some words that describe you mm -hmm. and pick a couple of fonts and just kind of stick with it. And then, okay, so what about, the, you know, your market? So knowing where you are, what is your niche, and right. then, and knowing who your target is, who are your, who are your target audience? Totally, so that kind of is like the next step from the branding, right? So mm -hmm. you kind of find who you are. Branding is sort of like the outward representation of who you are as a, as a brand or as a band or an artist, or if, if you're a brand. 
Um, but then that kind of niche market you want to look at is also a reflection of who you are and also who your fans could be or mm -hmm. maybe who they even are if you're not an emerging artist. Um, and it, it's, it's super important to kind of find those little, the, the little niches of where you can fit in because mm -hmm. you know a lot of times I'll ask an artist well who, what's your fan base like what who, you know who's your music for and they'll say it's for everyone oh grandma too grandma too everybody <laughs> and like so, you know okay. I would probably talk a lot differently you know this guy that, that person like yeah, I'm gonna and then talk to your grandma to yeah my grandma actually my grandma I'd probably say oh, oh yes yes she's super cool I've yeah I, I feel like you guys would get all the trouble we, we can, we can, <laughs> yeah, me too. So, um, so, but that, you know, I think it's really important to kind of define like, who are you talking to? Who are you maybe not talking to? And it's okay if, if certain people don't ever, you know, find right. out about you or so, but kind of starting with this like mm -hmm. core tribe of people is yeah. really important. Maybe like what you're passionate about or connecting with, you know, an audience in Your that way, of, you know? So one of the first things that we do, um, regardless of what kind of campaign we're doing with an artist, when we work on social media is we have a questionnaire that they fill out. And okay. in that questionnaire, we talk about the branding stuff, but we also talk about digging into like their passions and their, you know, influences and what drives them as mm -hmm. a person, but also as an artist mm -hmm. and a label, you know, if we're doing right. branding for a label and we can find some really interesting things that people never thought would be interesting to their fans right and right. that could be the way that somebody finds you yeah you know, we've had artists who are like super into they're super like sneaker collectors or they're right. you know really into cooking or they're a vegan or really non-profit and right. they've found fans through those channels because yeah. they talk about it it also gives you opportunities for like brand partnerships in the future right or things right. like that so really kind of like not yeah. being afraid to not talk about your music yeah you know i like that that is i I like that. That is connecting and yeah. build, you know, building your fan base. Um, all right. So let's move over to social media, which, you know, we are lucky that today we get, we are present, we have this great marketing tool right. that we can do ourselves, but we got to, let's, you know, we got to use it in a really strategic way. Use it for our, like to maximize, mm -hmm. you know, everything so just how do we use it right what do we think about right so there's you know four million things that we can be doing at any given time um and there's a bunch of different ways that you can use social but really to just kind of simplify it a lot of the things that we start to focus on with our clients especially when we're teaching social is focusing on consistency and authenticity okay so consistency what do you mean so consistency we're going to assume that your music's awesome we're going to assume that you brand talked about that we're going to assume that you know who your market is and you've created content for that market, mm -hmm. but now you need a structure in order to um, put that content out there. And if you, you know, kind of don't establish a cadence of when you're putting stuff out and it's mm -hmm. sort of like, oh, you're really consistent a week or every day. And then you, talk, you know, you go on tour for three weeks and don't post at all. Right. You right. Know, or vice versa. You know, you only post when there's something going on that it doesn't really serve the algorithms of these platforms very well. Exactly. So you have to really kind of constantly put stuff out there. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. the other thing, I mean, the authenticity piece is just, it has to come from you because right. that's going to be, people are going to know if it's not Yeah. like that. It's not coming from a place of, of, of genuineness. Is that yeah. the word? I don't know if that's a yeah. word. Genuine. We, we, yeah, we're going to use yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, it, it just coming from a place of like, oh, I, I, you know, I buy it. I buy that that artist really does, really is mm -hmm. into that thing. Yeah. You know. And then let's also mention engagement. Yeah. You know, engaging on, on social media. Yeah. So I always like to say that using social media is a lot like how you behave at a party. Okay. Where you would never like walk into a party and just be like, hey, everybody, I'm a musician and I'm releasing a video tomorrow and everybody watch it, you know, yeah, yeah. you would talk to people and listen to people and you would have conversations about things other than your music. And then you mm -hmm. would bring up that you're a musician and you are a releasing video and, mm -hmm. and you would respond to people's things right. that they're saying. And it's right. the same way on social, you know, to make it, make it a conversation, um, make sure that you're engaging on, you know, stuff that's happening on your pages, but then also on other pages. Right. Right. You know? Right. And it's, fun and amazing but it's also attracting attention to you yeah it's a lot of work it is i in northerly we are we have an instagram service and we you know really i really teach them how to use instagram the 
optimal way, yeah. like the best way really to tackle the algorithm. But there's all a second part to it and also co great content, obviously, but it's also this this um, engaging yeah. um, part of it. Yeah. Be, being engaging to others so your algorithm sees that and you care about other people. Yeah. But also, um, but yeah, and then constantly supporting each other right. and, and be just really being uh, engaging. All right, so that was social media. So now let's say that they are, it's an album release mm -hmm. and they are thinking, so what about publicity? So you can hire a publicist or, you know, what can we do ourselves? Right. So why don't we talk a little bit about both? Yeah, so I mean, we actually created our like DIY offering because we, have, we you know, always have people come to us saying, I need publicity. And we're like, I don't know if you need publicity quite yet. I think maybe you need to learn how to build your own audience first. Okay, so, you know, when, how do somebody know that, you know, they're ready for publicity. Right. I mean, I think when it's super, super obvious, the story that you have to tell, you've got, you know, an album done, you're a few, you know, you're a ways away from releasing it because hopefully you're planning ahead. You're not like, mm -hmm. I gotta get this out there. Plan ahead, plan ahead. Yeah, plan ahead, plan ahead. But like, maybe you have some dates coming up or a tour. Maybe you have, um, you know, a collaboration with another artist. Maybe you have something, some kind of story to tell that you think that, a, a writer would be interested in writing it. You really have to put yourself in the writer's shoes. Mm -hmm. You're getting so many submissions of so many things every day from emerging artists to super, super famous artists. Right. Why should they pay attention to you? And if, if, you're, yeah. if the question is, I don't know, yeah. then maybe you're not ready for a publicist yet. Yeah. Um, and maybe you can start at a smaller level by yourself. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're just starting out, if it's your first release, you know, and there's plenty of ways to do that. Um, you know, that's certainly something that we teach our, our, our emerging artists. Mm -hmm. um, that aren't quite ready for it, but it's really not um, brain uh, rock. I mean, rocket. Science. It is at a certain point because there's so much strategy when you're doing yeah. like a large yeah. scale publicity campaign. There is so much strategy. It's all about relationships. People spent a long time, you know, right. building these relationships. But if you're just starting out, you can do, you know, with a little bit of work because you have to do the work. Yep. Always, right? Yep. Um, you know, say you're like an emerging artist, you're, you're indie folk. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you can look at some, maybe look up some artists in your genre, but around your same size yeah. and status, um, and see where they're getting publicity. Yeah. And maybe even see who is the right for them. Right. And keep contact right that. There. Yeah. Keep your pitches super, super short. Yeah. Super, you know really informative, but like really, really short. That's the tricky part. Yeah. Um, don't annoy them too much. Right. You know? um, yeah. I think right straight to the point, like catchy, like yeah. short. And then if they're interested, you can, you know, they're going to dig more and right. and want to find out more and read more about you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really challenging, you know, yeah. and this is why, like, if, you know, I think that you can do that to a point and mm -hmm. get a little bit of, you know, get yourself to like here, but at a point you, you, you are going to have to take somebody on who has those deep relationships, who the, the writers will open their emails. They will respond. They will take a listen, you know? Yeah. But yeah. And so. Hey, maybe there's somebody already in your network that knows a writer, right. knows an editor who has a door, who's roommate with somebody, right. you know, finding those doors in so that um, there is, so that it just really helps so that at least they get your email read, you know, exactly. and, and trying to find those connections. Yeah. And then with that stuff, I mean, it really is just like getting your house in order and making sure that all the stuff that we just talked about, your social media, you're, you're doing everything. Yes, right. yes, 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 yes. One of the focuses is, you know, have everything ready first. Yeah. If you actually get somebody to read or to be like, to be interested in you and wanting to check out your website, right. Website got to be gas, yeah. you know, and, and then updated. Yes. And, and like ready. everything got to be perfect and ready yeah. for, for, you know, Bob Boylan to take a look. Right. Cause and you're going to get like, one yes. shot. Like if he's yes. going to actually click on that link, you yes. want him to be one like, shot. I don't understand. What kind of music do they play? Where do I click to hear it? Yes. Oh, well, gotta go. You know? Yes. Yes. A uh, bonus tip, make sure your Instagram bios are just amazing. You know, ha if Bob Boylan looks at it uh, and there's no info there or yeah, it's or just a link or not, yeah, link. not a great link to music. Yeah. Or and now you so can, you have, now you can put hashtags, active hashtags yep, in your in bios. There too. 
so to get them to look at more. But anyway, I've got to keep moving on here. All right, so now we, okay, so let's then talk about the numbers because right. now maybe we get somebody to go to your, you know, to your Instagram and to your Facebook and to your Spotify. Do they, you know, we got to work those numbers, right? Right. I mean, at, yeah, at some point, like, it is kind of a little bit of an optics thing where, you know, you want people to look and see something going on. Um, I think with emerging artists, uh, first of all, you know, it's, you, you have to, like, put everything into context. If you've mm -hmm. never released an album right. before and you For don't sure. have anything on Spotify, right? no one's going to be like, well, they don't have, you know, millions of streams. Like, of course yeah. they don't have millions of streams. Yeah. Um, especially if you're, you know, pitching someone a premiere of your first track or whatever. Yeah. Um, but this is where we kind of come back to um, engagement. Right, because, right. you know, yeah, you might not have thousands of followers yet on Instagram because you're still starting out, but to show that you've, you know, made an effort with your content, that it's consistent, that your bio is up to date, that it's showing everything that's going on, yeah. that there is engagement on your, on your stuff yeah. so that people can see, oh, other people are interested. Yeah. Maybe I should check this out. Yeah. You know? that it's super easy to like yeah. listen to your music. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think the numbers in terms of like, I mean, yes, I mean, there is, there is a big difference, right? Somebody looking at your Facebook page with 300 fans, then a thousand fans. Yeah. That, that little jump. Oh my like, God. It just, yes. it does make a difference. Yeah. Everybody wants to be verified, of course, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, starting out, I think, I think putting the context and putting the story behind the numbers is really important. So showing yeah. that engagement is just like, yeah, that's more important. But I, than yeah, I do want to point, point out that just work on those numbers, you know, invite all your friends yeah. to like your page, yeah. you know, get, you know, tell people to please, you know, like or work on it. Exactly. If you don't do anything, it's, it's not going to move, you know, so just yeah. do what you can do. Yeah. So I don't expect that if you put up a few photos that you're going to get yeah. all these followers, you know, just, use, use all the, use hashtags strategically, yeah. use, you're, like you were talking about your network, you know, yeah. if you know somebody, like, yeah. let everybody know what you're up to. Yeah. You know, yeah. Have and it. ask them, you know, tell them to, you know, what you, what you want them to do. What you want them to do. Yeah. If you don't ask, we're not going to do it. If you don't say, can you, you know, I would love it if you go and like my page on Facebook. Exactly. You know, I'd be like, oh, totally. Yeah. You know? Or, hey, did you guys know that, you know, talking to your fans, did you guys know that it really does matter if you give me a follow on Spotify, like not only will you yeah. find out about my music first, but it's awesome for me. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Sometimes people don't even think about that. Yeah. All right. And let me just also just quickly say um, that we don't, we don't want any fake followers, right? Because that is just ruining the algorithm. Yeah. It's just not going to do any good. All right. We got to keep going. So let's do uh, talk about the email. Right. That is really important. And can you talk about that? Yeah. What do we do and use it for? Totally. So in, you know, the age of social media, and, and I mean, think we all saw this hopefully with like the downfall of MySpace of, if I have a million friends on MySpace, <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's not a thing anymore. So how am yeah. I going to get to those people? Yeah. Um, so email is something that you own. You know, your website is, is the place where you, you kind of, you sort of rent, but you, you know, you own yeah. that space. Um, and, and email is, you own, you own those relationships. Um, it's still showing that, um, email conversions are higher than, you know, conversions on social media. Um, you see that when you post something on Facebook and mm -hmm. <laughs> you have like 2% of your fans even see it, let alone yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, totally. So, yeah. you know, you, you really, it's really important to build up that email list. People really rarely change their email. Um, yes, very true. They you know, keep their personal emails can go with you for years and years and years and yeah. years. And, um, yeah, reaching somebody in their email yeah. box is great. Yeah, telling somebody about a show, you know, you can make a Facebook event and, and invite people to it. Yeah. But I would absolutely also email, you know, segment your email list so that you know, okay, I'm playing New York. Who, you right. know, who right. can I email? Who's on my email list that, that plays New York? And, like, yeah. have an old school email sign up at your um, merch table still. If you yeah. have, like, an iPad or something, that's awesome. But you don't need it. You have, you need a piece of paper with, you know, yeah. a cute message and your logo or your name. And then, um, you know, you have your email. And I also think, you know, just going back to like the followers thing, put, um, a call for your fans, Twitter and Instagram handles as well. Right. Because then you can engage with them there. You can yeah. tag them in a photo from the show or something. So yeah. it's just, you know, gathering that, that information. But yeah. Email, so important. So collect them. But I also think that when you set up, when you actually write your, your newsletter, yeah. 
try to give them some value. Yeah. Give them some value. Have something to offer. Maybe it's some kind of content that only goes out to the subscribers. Um, maybe you write, I love diary entries. Yeah. Like give them something special. Yeah. Maybe there's, you know, 50% off on some merch. Right. Give them a reason, something of value. You don't want them to just unsubscribe and see right. you as, exactly. you know, you want to connect with them, be personal and just give them something special. Yeah. Um, and look at the open rates too. You know, if you see the open rates um, aren't great, maybe you need to change your subject lines. Ooh, if, you yes. know, or look at the, look at the, you know, if you have a call to action in your newsletters, and no one's clicking the link. Maybe you need to like put that higher up or something. Well, yeah, um, I can spend all day talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then, what if now the label is they have who has an album release and now pull all of this together and create a marketing campaign? Right. So can we just go through a little bit? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the number one thing is, you know, creating a timeline and then working backwards from that. All right. Love timelines. Yeah. So, you know, what are the temporal things that are like, they're going to happen no matter what? Like, yeah. here's when the album releases. Here's when the single releases before that. Here's the video release. So you kind of have all these things lined up and then you work backwards from them. So, mm -hmm. you know, okay, well, if, they're, if the album release is coming out there, then how far in advance should we release the single? And then where's the video fit in? Are we going to mm -hmm. do a lyric video? Mm -hmm. Should we start teasing this stuff first? You know, how do we build the fan? Do we need to like either, are we starting from scratch or do we need to re-engage the fan base before we even start talking? Yeah. Um, so all of that stuff has to happen. You know, I think planning ahead is, is just priceless because planning 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 yeah you don't want to be like hey i made this amazing record there yeah. it is no one's expecting it or no yeah. one is prepared and you haven't warmed up your fan base at all yeah and then something that i love about your company and it's something that is kind of like a mission for my company also is just thinking new like forward thinking what is hap you know just mm -hmm. Don't try to do something that's done or just boring. Like trying to think of something, um, some cool content. Yeah. Something. Maybe we do some. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many. There's unlimited of creative things there really you can are. do. And, and there's so, so much do, you can do on a budget too. You don't yes. really need to have yes. a lot of money to do something cool. You can you can do like a, a like you can phrase something differently than people usually do. Or yes. You can you know just create content on your iPhone. Like we have so many yes. tools that are disposable. Yes, 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 yes. Crazy. So. I mean, do a, you know, do a, a, your release of your album at a gallery. If you're one of those right. really cool, if you, that really fits in your niche, right? right? Why don't you just, I mean, just really try to think out of the box. Yeah. I think it's fun. And just knowing what's going on right now. Yeah. And then not being in yesterday, but being now and maybe even trying to do some, so many things. Exactly. Um, all right. So they can, you know, plan it all out. They can do, you know, see if they want to do, reach out to some media outlets. Right. If they want to do their own publicity. Right. They are going to have a plan. You know, that's going to happen months and months before. Right. And, right. Yeah. And then they're going to send out, you know, a newsletter to letting right. everybody know about it, offer something. We're going to, you know, just be really active on social media. and. Yeah, 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 a lot of <laughs> a lot of work. So I'm gonna see if there's anybody that wants to have that have a question for us. Um, yes, everybody can submit your questions in the Q and A. All right, so let me take a look at that that little tab here, and then no questions yet. I think you can also just chat them. Oh, you can type them in. Yeah, you can type them in. Cool. But what are some things, some, is there some other tips, is there something else that we felt like we were, I can keep an eye on here, but yeah. there's something else that we feel like we kind of went back A lot of it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the question that I Yeah, what do you, okay, so yeah. let's do that. What like, do you most often get, get asked? I feel like we get asked a lot of, you know, everybody's looking for like, what's the thing I can do to get more followers? Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, people want that. And yeah, really like for us, when we're asked that question, and this is something that you can even ask yourself, whether you're a label or, a, or an artist, um, is, well, what do you want followers for? Are you trying to 
sell a product and the answer is so many different things, yeah. right? Like, yeah, I'm trying to sell a product. Yeah, I'm trying to sell my tour. Yeah, I'm trying to get more streams on Spotify. Yeah, I'm trying to whatever. Um, but if you create a campaign, we call them like micro campaigns. We create a campaign to get more followers with a goal of what you want them to do in mind, then mm -hmm. it'll be a lot more clear. You can have like that kind of follow through, you mm -hmm. know? So and if you're going on tour and you're, you're okay, so you want followers, but you want followers specifically in the markets that you're going on tour. Mm -hmm. well, how do you connect with those people? Like you, you were saying, you, you reach out and you connect with them where they are and then you bring them back to where you are and then you can, you know, engage with them there. Yeah. Um, so I think, or if you're, if you're looking for, for followers because you just want people there when you're ready to release something, then you have to have the content banked and ready to, to, you know, put out there to make people stay and also be, you know, kind of serve them once you've, brought them in. Yes. You know? This actually is something that I love. It's just one of my main things that I say with anybody that I meet almost, but anybody that asks for any sort of advice is create content constantly. Just yeah. walk. And I do this myself because I'm always on Instagram yeah. and needing content. And I just, anywhere I go and I just, even if I'm on the subway or I'm in a coffee shop or I'm at home, yeah. just try to just use those eyes and look for something. Yeah you know, here's this cool vinyl, here's what I, I, I don't know, like just whatever your thing is, whatever you your, like yeah, have our, help our artists, like, um, there it looks like there's, some oh yeah, let's see, um, thank you, nice, I just wanted to ask about streaming service, Spotify, yeah, for artists and SoundCloud, Cloud. is it good to be as far out there as possible, or better to be selective here, and how many people can consume music? Oh, I know what I, my advice on that. But okay. You, you think that they should just throw their music out everywhere or should they be more selective? I think that it doesn't need to be selective. It needs to be strategic. Okay. Um, so you don't need to be selective in who you're, who you want to receive your music in, in a way. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, I would, I would, before you just put something out there on SoundCloud or, or Spotify, um, I would build your audience so that there's a de you're creating a demand for it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you use teasers of that music or you use older music or whatever to kind of e explain what you're about. Mm -hmm. And then once you then release that rec that song or that record, then, then you have people that are like, oh, we were, ex we're excited about this now. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense where you're not just like putting it out and then trying to find your audience? Right, 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 right. Um, and so I also wanted to say that I think that, yes, totally being strategic, but I would, you know, in these beginning, you know, when you're, obviously, when you're a bigger band, yeah, everywhere, you know, but in, when you're really building, I think maybe, um, what is the word, like, driving traffic mm -hmm. to a few uh, platforms rather right. than all of them. Oh, so I see what this person You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I'm saying should you be on every single DSP? Right. So like, I yeah. would say, I mean, and you're going to, you can ask some other people who might disagree with this, but I would say, you know, try to drive your traffic to say Spotify right. so that all your streams are coming there and you're building there right, rather than on right. all these other ones also. And then I would recommend Instagram and Facebook. And I actually would personally recommend Instagram before Facebook I, because I think it's easier to build there mm -hmm. and then I would drive traffic from Instagram to Facebook mm -hmm. I them there and I would say hey you know I have this going on on my Facebook page right. and then get them there because you can kind of easier grab them there then you need to have a website for your website but that's, that's not tracking on a, a number yeah. but yeah. that's where you can get your you know stuff so I would say you know yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it depends how you're releasing your music too. But yeah. you know, like if you're if you're going through like a TuneCore, a CD Baby, or you know, an indie distributor, you can choose which which um, which DSPs you want your music on, um, and you can put it on all of them. But you then you just choose where, like you know, choose where channels, or you can use like um, like a, a smart URL to direct people. Yes. You know, so that, you can have them choose where they want to go. Totally agree. Put it. You can put it everywhere. Yeah, but drive traffic, you know, try, you know, the links, I have so many emails all the time. Oh, I have really seen this. 12 links. Right. I'm like 12 links and all of them are just 
you know, had low numbers and just, right, you know what right, I mean? Right, like right, instead right. of giving me like the best one right. or the best two, you know? Yeah. So I think that is, um, it's good to think have about. One, we have another question. What's this one say? Which of the social media platforms do you find the best? <laughs> for building engaged followers. For I, think we just I think that we I do think we just talked about yeah. that. Yeah. So definitely. I mean, I, I agree. Like Instagram is great for building engaged followers because people are, yes. it's just a lot of artists also just prefer using it because it comes naturally to them. It's a very visual platform. Yes. You know, it's fun to use. Yes. Um, you know, I think everybody, you can have like different uses for your different platforms. Yeah. Um, I also don't, I also think it's, it's nice to have different content on each platform. Yes, they are very different. Yes. yes. You can use them in different ways. Absolutely. Up a little and, bit. and my also, yeah. And, you know, it depends on, I think, how, you know, how big or small you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, you might have people that are like, I just don't use Facebook. I only use Instagram. Yeah. And you want to get information about your show out there. Yeah. But then you might also have people that are like, oh, I forgot to check. Facebook yeah. Yeah. or Instagram. We also have a question in the oh. Q&A. Oh, do we? No. An example of some out-of-the-box campaigns or ideas that people have done with you. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, so I like the, my gallery idea. I like that, too. <laughs> I would totally go to that. Uh-huh. Me, too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. We've had, okay, so we do a lot of stuff with um, brand collaborations as well. So, mm -hmm. like, we'll do... Um, we had, I'm trying to think, so, um, we have an artist right now who is t doing a collaboration with Lomography Cameras, um, cause we do a lot of work with them, a lot of partnerships with them. And so the idea there is that the, is that the camera company promotes the artist to their audience. And then the artist promotes the camera saying, Hey, I'm taking pictures on the road with this camera to their audience. Yeah. Um, so that is a really fun thing to do with a brand um, or, you know, with another artist or, you know, it could be anything. It could be a nonprofit. It could be, you know, any. So I love doing stuff like that because it's just like, you know, it's almost like a different form of PR kind of. Yeah. And everyone kind of. I, I really love things that has to do, you know, I'm obsessed with Instagram and, <laughs> and has as, you know, based on pictures. So say your album is, you know, it's called the Carrots uh, album. Yeah. It's orange. Mine probably would be. <laughs> and then you, you know, you are on tour and you're promoting this album. Yeah. And then you bring this Carrots of this theme mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. So you find something, you know, and this needs to be linked to your album, right? right. So that it kind of makes sense. Um, and then you use it, you know, say you're in New York, you are eating on top of the Empress State Building, then right. you're down, you know, then you're at a beach or whatever, you know, do, I mean, the people are going to engage and love and, you know, and click and, and everything when, when it's fun and, yeah. and they're like, oh, I wonder what she's doing today. Oh, I need to see what the person right. is putting out that, you know, what, what's, what, where is the carrot today? Right. You know, exactly. and then you'll be like, oh, I have to check it out. Exactly. And that's kind of what we refer to as content teams. So you, you know, you have these Themes that people start expecting. Where's the carrot? Yeah. You know, where yes. do you have the carrot? And, now, and then maybe on the next one, it's like, where is it? And yeah. you kind of have to like look, try right. to find it. Right. Maybe even I like audience participation. Mm -hmm. So you can be like, tell me where to, where should I, but, what, yeah. what should I do tomorrow? You know? We have, um, should, okay, we have two. Once you have a target audience, what would be the best, and we must look hilarious trying to read these questions. Yeah. What would be the best way of engaging with them in the real world outside of social media? That's a great question because I think, you know, you don't want to get stuck in the box of, you know, Instagram. So, um, I mean, one of the things is, you know, put a call to action on a social media post. Hey, if you're in, you can even boost and target that post towards the city that you're playing, you know, that night or, or, or the next night. Hey, if you're coming to the show tonight, you know tag a friend that you're bringing and meet me at the merch booth and I'll give you a free sticker or something like that. Or, you know, something like that so that you have a, you have a sort of in real life element to the audience that you're building yeah. because those, those relationships are, you know, that means a lot when you've taken the time to actually like meet your fan mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. I, it, with Northerly, I really focus on the New York, um, local music mm -hmm. scene. And I, you know, I tell them to, go to your your peers' shows right. like go to the shows and they're your target audience is going to be there you know right, talk right. to them hang out with them 
um, and all that. So, um, and where they are. It's true. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe there's a particular bar that place that focuses on your type of music. You know? right. Go there. I also love it when some bands have, um, they do guest DJing mm -hmm. or you can do it for when they, you know, have a night that's your type of music. Yeah. You know, you're an Americana artist. Be a DJ at this Americana right. dance night. I'll <laughs> go to that. <laughs> I'll go to that. Um, so yeah, connect with them. In the real that was world. some some example. Yeah, yeah. We have one more. I know we're running out of time, so yeah. we're running. We'll do that social one. And then media post. should social media so should social media posts be focused more on quality over quantity, or is it more important to be consistently? I mean, quality is extremely important. Yeah. Is that Theo? Do I is that Theo? Do I know you, Theo? I think I know. Him. How can you? Yes, yeah, right there. Um, so yeah, um, um, yes, it's you. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, it's important, right? Because, you know, like we're always asking when we work with an artist, we're always asking for content because awesome. we, um, we want to be able to, um, uh, post stuff or, or create their, their strategy for them with content that they captured right mm -hmm. and so one of the things that we're always really adamant is like just make sure that the fo the photo is in focus you know make sure that yes like, yes yes you know if it's like if you're if you have a very specific color scheme that you're paying attention to that but yes quality is very very important so yes you have to make a lot of quality yeah content. <laughs> and you know what i'll tell you a little secret algorithm secret is you can have great you know posts lots of likes blah 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 and all this like, oh my god i don't know what to do and you just do something just not cool. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't have to be important. I mean, I don't know. I can't stand those pictures of of um like something oh, that yeah, like I just love flat lay. Just <laughs> just like okay. So say <laughs> say that um okay, your content is then you, you just know, post something boring. Something boring. Yeah. And it just does not look good. Yeah. Then people all of a sudden are not gonna Right. like right and then all of a sudden next time you post something your post might not show up on their yeah, yeah, yeah. on their you know in their algorithm yeah. yeah so you want them to like every single one however right. you know you do want to be consistent but yeah. just think about that too so yeah just if you do a bad one bad one bad one ooh, and you know like you might lose bad right it's just i think what you're what you um what you uh, Should, like bad, like I don't know what that happened just then. Um, but just keep in mind, I like to talk about like posting with purpose. So just keep in mind, like, why am I posting this? Am I posting? You know, just kind of keep that in mind. Am I posting this because yeah. I don't know what else to post right yeah. now? Yeah, that might not be the best. You know what? That's a know. good point. You know, have a purpose. Yeah, you know, some the purpose, like some super. some kind of. It's just like life. Purpose. Yeah, if you, can, you can find a purpose in life. <laughs> All right, so one more here. How can you run a contest on Instagram versus a platform like Twitter? Okay, that's a great question. One, yeah. Um, so on Instagram, you know, you're, you you want to use the platform the way it, it's made, right? So on on Instagram, it might be like you want you want to get more engagement on your posts because then you're content is going to be served to more people mm -hmm. go out like that that's yeah. the al my that's algorithm good. yeah it's good i like that <laughs> um so yeah so you can do you know a uh, tag a friend you can do uh and then you both win something or you win a you win a, a ticket to my show fun or you can do um comment below with your favorite lyric to my new song or comment below to whatever you whatever it is that you want to do and then you can choose a random um when you do something like that and it's it's actually like technically called the sweepstakes because you're choosing a random winner and then mm -hmm. it, you avoid a lot of different rules that you have to participate in um right with twitter you know do a retweet contest so that you're getting more um you're perpetuating your message and your brand so you have you know you tweet something, retweet this for a chance to win, use okay. the hashtag, blah, blah, blah. Now you can tally up how many people use that hashtag, but you're also encouraging people to spread what it is that you're saying. Yeah. You're playing your rock tomorrow, you know, retweet this for a chance to win a ticket. Now yeah. everybody knows you're playing a rock because everyone retweeted it to get a chance to win a ticket. And then you choose a winner. You can even, you know, 
call, shout out there. Yeah. Those are always great. So yeah. on I Instagram, like, we'll yeah. post about it or whatever. Absolutely. Use those shout, out, shout outs. Yeah. Instagram community is all about that. Totally. Lots of different, okay. um, yeah, unlimited amounts of <laughs> so many ways. Ways so you can do. Fun, you know, and you'll and essentially working and it's not working so that you know what to do better the next time or like, oh, that worked really well. I'm going to do that again next time. All right. Well, we're 10 minutes over. Just, you know, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but thank you for Marnie. Thank you for having me. And then thank you all for watching. And um, you guys actually, let me tell you, you can reach out to us. Yeah. We, and you know, we just talked about network today. Mm -hmm. So you, you reach out to us, blah, 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 you know, start saying you say that you watch the, the webinar and everything. Yeah. And all of a sudden we become part of your network. Exactly. And then when you have a release, you know, Or, um, at Team Sneak Attack, and mine is my name, Marnie Wandner, W A N D N E N E R. And you guys, well, and then your email, is, my email, if you want to give me, your yeah, email, yeah, Marnie my... at sneakattackmedia.com, yeah, M A R N I, yes. And then you can email me, Eva at northerlyagency.com. The best way to get in touch with me is through direct message on Instagram, yeah. that's right hang out. So if you actually, same with me, yeah, if you actually send me a direct message. That is how you definitely will get a hold of me. Yeah. Um, of Even course, though I read my email. The I, email I, do, but I know. I, oh, I know. But I do read my email too. <laughs> but it, it's just easier to just chat. I it mean, is. it's just, it's, it it's way, yeah. So yeah, and then we can send you out some more info as well. Um, but thank you for joining. And then we're going to have another education um, webinar next month. Also, let me know if you have ideas on things that we should discuss. And then I will see you next month. All right. Bye, all. And then I don't know how they, I failed.